be the person with embarrassing goals and impressive results instead of one of the many people with impressive goals and embarrassing results. Stephen Guise According to a study done at Duke University, 45% of our behaviors are done automatically, without us even thinking or considering them. Almost half of everything you do is driven by what you've done in the past and the habits you've formed, not you actively deciding to do them. For many of us, this is a shocking fact, but can also be quite helpful, knowing that if we can ingrain the right habits, we can accomplish many of the day-to-day -day things that we want to do almost on autopilot. That is the concept behind Many Habits by Stephen Guise. This book is aimed at helping you understand how your brain works, how that applies to your habits, and how you can apply the use of many habits to develop long-term beneficial habits and routines. Let's start by looking at how and why the brain uses habits. To understand habits, you need to look at the brain. Your brain is divided into two parts, conscious and unconscious. The conscious part is your awareness. It's the part of the brain that is firing when you are reading, driving to work, singing your favorite song. The unconscious mind, however, runs behind the scenes without us noticing much. Your brain will automate and make unconscious decisions about the things we've repeatedly done in the past to save us energy. The conscious mind is much less efficient and takes a lot more energy than the unconscious. The more often that we repeat an action, the more likely it will be that our brain will start doing this action on autopilot. And this is the basis of many habits. Now, let's look at willpower, motivation, and habits. Most habit change is driven by a sudden burst of motivation. New Year's resolution plans of working out every day and eating better in order to lose 50 pounds are a perfect example. The problem is that after a week or two, motivation will fade. Willpower can last a little longer than motivation, but willpower is taxed in a variety of different ways and can often run out when we need it the most. This is why many people who rely on these two for habit change fail. Sooner or later, motivation fades away and willpower runs out, leaving you to fall back into older, easier habits that are already ingrained. And this is where many habits come in. Many habits are something that feels ridiculously small. The author said that he came across this method when trying to get into shape. He was struggling to force himself to continue a 30 minute a day workout plan. So instead, each day he convinced himself to do a single push up. It was so easy and almost effortless. He didn't find his brain fighting back or making excuses for not doing it. He found that when he tried to do a 30 minute workout, his brain pushed back and gave excuses. But there was no pushback for a single push up. The one push up was so easy that many days he found himself energized by it. Most days he would add a few extra push ups or some pull ups or end up doing the 30 minute workout that he had been avoiding. By doing one push up a day, he slowly but surely was able to build up a habit of exercising regularly. As doing a push up started to become normal, so did doing a little more. Pretty soon, the 30 minute workouts were simply a part of his day that his brain didn't resist anymore. So how do you implement these changes? Here are eight small steps to big change, according to guys. Step one is defining the habit. Pick one to three habits that you want to change and then apply the mini habit methodology to them. During the first week, it should almost feel that you're not doing enough on any of these things. There should be no mental resistance whatsoever at all to performing your mini habits, and in most cases, they should take you less than 10 minutes. If you are getting mental resistance, then make the habit even smaller. Let's say your goal is to write 3,000 words a day for a book or a blog. Your original mini habit was just 50 words a day. Even at that, you find yourself struggling to sit down to the computer and start writing. Reduce the goal to one sentence and see if that helps. Number two is your why. Science has shown that if your why is strong enough, a habit can be broken almost instantly. 
Smoking is known to be extremely difficult to stop, but if your why is strong enough, people have been known to quit instantly and permanently. Why do you want to change certain habits? Write down the reasons and continue to add to the list as time goes on. Step 3. Define your cues. You want to design your habits and your mini habits to have cues that trigger them. Maybe it's the time of day, like at 9am I will do my push-up, or maybe it's tied to another behavior that you already do. After I brush my teeth, I will wash my face. Step 4. Celebrate your achievements. The brain is addicted to rewards, so make sure that you acknowledge and celebrate the progress that you are making. Just make sure the reward supports your habit change. If your habit change is no more sweet foods, and you're rewarding yourself with a candy bar, then you are actually doing harm to your habit change process. Find something healthier that aligns with your habit change goals. Step 5. Record your progress. Write down your successes before you go to bed each night. This way, you not only track your progress, but you make sure that you are sticking to the plan. Also, a calendar or a whiteboard where you mark off each day that you complete your mini habit can be helpful. Small visual reminders like this are very powerful. Number six, think small. Small steps lead to changes that you want. One push-up a day is better than trying for 30-minute workouts and only getting one workout done in a week. Be patient, keep hitting your mini goals, and the change will take place in time. Number seven, drop your expectations. View success as meeting the mini habit each day. Anything more than that is a bonus, but don't expect it or be disappointed if it doesn't happen. Number eight, watch for signs of progress. When building habits through this method, watch for signs of thoughtless action, less resistance to the behavior, normalization with it, and even boredom. These all mean the behavior is becoming an unconscious habit. If you follow these steps, don't cheat on them, and maintain a level head, then you can achieve your habit change goals. Anything you feel resistance to, take a step back, slow down. Slow is better than no progress at all. Remember, be the person with embarrassing goals and impressive results, instead of one of the many people with impressive goals and embarrassing results. There are a ton of good habit change books that we've covered on this channel, and this book definitely deserves its own spot. Habit change isn't easy, but by taking bits and pieces of advice from each of these books, you can find what works for you and change your habits effectively. Do you have a book, idea, or article that you'd like to see us summarize and animate? Leave your suggestions, along with a like and a subscribe, down below in the comments section, and we'll do our best to make a video out of your idea.